Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe, narrated by Disney, or Lucas Lucasfilm, whichever way you slice it, Legends. Well, despite the title of the video, I don't have too much to talk about in that department, but I have a lot of other things included in this video to talk about with you. So, getting with it, bear with me before we get to the actual title. We have Cool Earl Kong. I don't freaking know how to pronounce it. It is a story by Patricia Jackson in Adventure Journal number eight. Um, the you could also find it uh, in Tales of the New Republic. It exists. I have nothing to add to this story. I just. I don't care about Patricia Jackson. Much like Matt, I try not to be swayed by other people's opinions, but I, I just don't feel it most of the time with Patricia Jackson. So, yeah. Moving forward, though, in Adventure Journal number five, we have A Bitter Winter, also by Patricia Jackson. And I still don't care. So I'm not even going to inform you what it's about. But this is chronologically where you would read it. We're having a whole lot of bland in this episode. We have Only Droids Serve Their Masters by Kathy Tires in Adventure Journal number 10. I actually thought this one was fun. It's fine. Um, it's nothing incredible or horrible. It's a, it's a fun little thing that you can read about. I, the only thing I wrote down as a note is at the end of the story... She references the uh, the American Revolution, not in the story. It's like a like a like an author's note about it, and she mentions like how a lot of the characters in here. She like made like one of the characters like specifically quote like Thomas Jefferson and other people like that, which I because it had to do with you know rebellion and and stuff, and so I thought that was interesting. Um, we also have in Star Wars Galaxy number 12, Priority X. Um, it's a corporate sector adventure, so that's kind of interesting. It's really short, though. It's like 13 pages. Um, and I don't know if it should be placed earlier because they talk about the Death Star as if that just happened. But at the same time, you know, news takes a while to get around, so maybe they only just heard about it. I don't know if it should be placed earlier or not. But I just put it here. So there's that. And then, a super fun one. Debatable. Um, but this is most definitely 110% um, S-Canon status. Um, but in the, in the real world, and you might get where I'm going with this, if you're in the real world, Christmas is always at the end of the year before the new year begins because after this it's officially 1 ABY one year after the Battle of Yavin. So you don't have to include this in your Legends timeline. Brace yourself if you do but the next thing to put if you're including it would be the Star Wars Holiday Special which I think 90% of it didn't happen. I do think that Han tried to drop Chewie off at Kashyyyk to spend time with his family on Life Day, because Life Day is a real thing, and because of the Expanded Universe, we know that Chewie has a family, and that the Imperials might have gotten in the way of him getting there in time. Everything else, very debatable. <laughs> but... This would be where, if you were, if you wanted to go through that, it'd be about here. Now, officially, one year after the Battle of Yavin, we have a couple of short stories to also get through. We have, oh my gosh, Lando Calrissian, Idiot's Array by Rich Hanley. What a freaking love letter, man. This, this, this is so, it's, it's a short story. Um, it accounts for... Another short story, I forget the name of it, and uh, the the Star Wars Tales comic, right? It's crazy that it's connected to Star Wars Tales, but um, in the Star Wars Tales comic, Lando 
wins Cloud City. And so now we're getting to see him, you know, managing that, trying to live life as an actual businessman and not as a scoundrel. And it's just so much good. His banter with Lobot is so reminiscent of Vufi Ra. They even mention that because he keeps calling him like the Baron Administrator. And Lando says, stop calling me Baron. And it's just like in the Lando Calrissian trilogy by by um, Al Neil Smith. And that's the thing. Like, I didn't think Timothy Zahn does a pretty good job with, with Lando. And so does Lucino, um, you know, in like the in the future stuff. But this was it it oozed, it just felt like Lando. This this is the highlight of everything I'm talking about today was this short story. I I mean, oh my gosh, I mean this is better than literally everything I'm I've have already mentioned and will mention moving forward. Or not like every video ever, but like for this video specifically. Oh, it was so good. Um it was so much fun. I, I highly, highly, highly recommend this short story. Oh my gosh. But um Yeah, it was it was incredible. Matt talks about more about the the author, how he's actually talked to him. Or or a friend of his that's like the author, where there he was talking about Star Trek Discovery and how, you know, Matt doesn't like it, but this guy is trying to like make connections left and right because that's what the EU writers did, right? Like they'd be like, "Oh, I can connect this and that and that," and there's so many connections just within this little short story. It was great, and it continues off with Star Wars Tales comics, so it was a lot of fun. If you want to see Lando before Episode Five uh, in control of Cloud City, this will be an interesting one for you. Lobot and uh, I don't know if you can count Lobot as a droid, but Lobot's a lot of fun and. um if anyone was to replace the banter and the fun that um, Lando and Luffy Ra had, Lobot's the one for it. But yeah, moving forward, we have Star Wars Tales. Now that we're moving over to the comics, uh, Star Wars Tales number 21, uh, Walking the Path That's Given. Um, this one's pretty decent. There's a guy named Ghent. Vader makes him work for him, and the story's not concluded yet. I don't know if it's going to be. It's just kind of left with him still being a part of the Empire. But the art was okay. It was a decent little tale. So there's that. And before you read the novel that I'm going to be discussing, you would read in Star Wars Insider 74, Pearls in the Sand, also written by... Veronica Whitney Robinson, which is just a little short story. You don't need anything, but it basically introduces you to the main character of the Ruins of Dantooine novel. And we are going to talk about the novel. Just one more thing to mention before then, which is in Marvel Star Wars, yes, the original Marvel Star Wars run, issue 38. And in issue 38, this is the issue right before they would have the comic book issues, just adapting episode 5. Um, Leia and Luke get transported into the void. They end up finding this organic ship. Um, and so that's interesting. Um, it's not the Vong or anything, but it is very interesting that even back then we had like this organic sort of meld of a ship thing idea. Um, now I don't, it's not really a contradiction or anything. It's just simply that it's one adventure amidst the thousands of, that Luke and Leia have. So they probably just don't really remember much about I mean, it's kind of hard to forget that, but it's just like, it's a one-off adventure among many, many others. So um, it's fine. They go in there. They they find this, you know, guy that's like strapped to this chair. He's now melded with the ship or whatever. And he kills an Imperial Star Destroyer by using antimatter and whatever. It, it, it's kind of crazy. But it, it's a fun little comic, and, and I, as always, I love the Marvel comics of Star Wars. Um, basically, issues 39 to 44, I think, is just episode 5 of Star Wars, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about those. I, I have the movie. I don't need a comic adaptation of it. Um, so next time I talk about Marvel comics, I'll be skipping a few issues. But that's just for warning. And now, on to the actual title of the freaking video, 
Ruins of Dantooine by Veronica Whitney Robinson, who is apparently a marine biologist or something. So that's interesting. Um, so before I actually talk about the novel, because I have slightly more info than Matt Wilkins does on this. Now, there was an MMO called Star Wars Galaxies. Now, that was even past my time, or not past my time, but I was too young to care. I was two years old when that game came out, so it didn't affect me. It wasn't a part of my childhood. Now, the game is still up. Um, the servers have been dead for a long time now because no nobody from Lucasfilm is taking care of it. But there are fans online that have done restoration things with mods and stuff, so you can still play it today, technically, but it's being run and held together by uh, fans. Um, but there there's multiple, you know, like, Let's Plays and stuff, or walkthroughs, or just exploration videos on YouTube you can find. And... The thing about Star Wars Galaxies is, it, with, with SWOTOR, um, you know, it is a heavily story-focused game, you know, with branching dialogue choices that aren't really that different, but you have dialogue choices and, you know, characters to develop and bond with and all that stuff. So, like, it's, it's a role-playing in that sense, where you have a clear story outlined and you, you make decisions along the way. Um, but, um... In Star Wars Galaxies, there's not really a story. I mean, there's a bunch of quests you can do, you know, to level up in the game. But there's not really an overarching plot. Because Star Wars Galaxies is set within the Rebellion Era, which means you can't do very much. The thing about SWOTOR is you can go big, you can go hard. Because it's in an era outside the movies. So you can kind of do stuff. And make it seem like grand and big against the entire galaxy. Make you feel like all your decisions and weighing are super important. Because you are the center of the galaxy. At least that's how it feels in the games. Because that's how it is. I mean, the player character in Svotor is the most important character of all time. At least if you're playing as a Jedi or a Sith warrior. Um, but in Star Wars Galaxies, you, know, you can be whatever you want to be. You want to be um, uh, a bounty hunter? You can do that. You can take bounties and do stuff like that. You want to be a smuggler? You can do that. You want to be a rebel operative? You can be that. You want to be an imperial person? You can do that. You want to simply just be a trader who sets up shop on Corellia and trades stuff with actual players? You can do that. Um... Now, being a Jedi in the original game, it was much harder to do that. You had to find, like, several holocrons across worlds and stuff, and then you could become a Jedi. Um, but that's not... It, it, I think now with the fan things that are keeping it up, it's a lot easier to become that. You just click be a Jedi. Um, but before, it was a much harder process. Um, but I wouldn't consider that the canon one anyway, because I prefer Luke being one of the few Jedi out there. I know, I know there's a couple in hiding and stuff, like Kruk and whatnot, but... I just don't think there should be a new Jedi coming about right now. Um, so I would never, if I play the game, I wouldn't play as a Jedi. Probably be a smuggler or a rebel operative or something. But basically, you just you just travel the planets that are famous in Star Wars. Like, you got Dantooine, of course, the novel. You got um, Kashyyyk. Well, I think that was an expansion. And Mustafar, those were both expansions in the prequels. You have um, Endor... You have Yavin 4, you have um, a Dothmir, you have Corellia, the, um, the planet that uh, is the home planet of the uh, Bosque's race. Um, you have the home planet of Nim, you have Naboo, I think. So, you know, you have a lot of those, you know, Tatooine, of course. You know, so you just, you just go exploring the galaxy and you just... You go to people, you find them, they need you to go get, like, a shirt or something, because they it was near and dear to their hearts because their daddy gave it to them or something, so you go to, like, a cave and kill some monsters and go grab it, you know? It's that sort of thing. But because we're in the Rebellion era, 
you're not going to be doing anything super crazy because the only ones allowed to progress the universe in a major way right now are Han, Luke, and Leia. And I think that's another reason why I find the Rebellion era so weak because you can't do very much. Like even with the Republic comics and stuff, with the Clone Wars era, because um, there was a whole bunch of colorful characters that could be expanded upon. Mace Windu, Dooku, you know, um, Quinlan Voss, Ayla Secura, you know, characters that are kind of just in the movies, but they don't do much. You can expand upon them. You're kind of free to, to just explore that. But with the Rebellion era, the only characters that really do anything important are Han, Luke, and Leia, and their character development can only happen within the films themselves. So that's why I tend to find the Rebellion era kind of the weakest of all the eras of, of Star Wars. That being said, the game is fine. Uh, it baffles me that they, said they decided to make a novel about it. Like, I wish they would have made novels, either, or like, novelization canon versions of SWOTOR. So at least, at the very least, people that don't like to play video games like Matt Wilkins could experience those stories. And I do think, in my personal opinion, I know a lot of people don't like SWOTOR, um, that there there's stuff in there worth experiencing. And I think you're missing out as a Star Wars fan to not know about it. And a novel could have really helped for people that just don't have time for video games or to watch, like, long Let's Plays. Uh, but that being said, they decided to make a book about a game that ultimately doesn't really have a main plot, at least from what I can tell. From all the things I've seen of it, it doesn't seem to have a main plot. You get rescued by Han Solo and Chewbacca at the very beginning of the game. And then after that, you're free reign to do whatever. Which can appeal to a lot of people when you're playing a video game. But when reading a book about that same game, it doesn't make much sense. But anyway, moving on to the ruins of Dantooine, finally. It is a novel that was created to basically help promote the game. In fact, it is the contender top five for one of the worst, if not the worst, but that is more debatable, uh pieces of artwork that we've gotten for the Star Wars Expanded Universe. The cover of this book is literally just a screenshot from the video game. Like, no effort put into it whatsoever. Now, the story itself, it's not horrible. It's not the most boring thing I've ever read. It was Fatal Alliance and Legions. Those books are boring. Siege and Gambit, oh my goodness. And then a more debatable one, but I like to piss off Noah. Into the Void, Dawn of the Jedi, which I found abysmally boring. Um, minus the world building, which was good. But this book doesn't have that because, you know, it doesn't. I mean, there's some stuff with animals, if you like that, I guess. Basically, uh, the Empire wants this holocron. Not a Jedi holocron, not a Force holocron, just a normal holocron with a bunch of information contained within. Um, which would hurt the Rebel Alliance. And so... Um, this rebel, Finn, sequel, uh, finds, uh, this biologist, or xenobiologist, uh, who, who's a part of the Empire, but convinces her to go and help find this thing, along the way of cameos from literally everyone, Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, um, Wedge shows up to literally just say hello and then frick off. Um, a cooler EU connection with Nim uh, uh, from the Starfighter video game. And a couple comics that he's in in the prequel era. Um, and they go and they do a bunch of kind of boring stuff. But they go across planets that you can explore in the game. Which would be more entertaining in the game. Um, and in the end there's a, there's a twist that you know if you've done any bit of reading you could see from a mile away. Uh, and then the one surprising thing is that by the end of the end of the book, our, our heroes fail. They actually they actually lose. So I thought that was a, a genuinely something I wasn't expecting to happen. So that was that was something that got me. So there you go. Um, do I recommend it? No. I mean, I'll say that it's not the worst thing. It wasn't horrible. It's fine. It's eh. Like, it's, it exists. It's, it's not offensively bad or anything. It's just, it's just, 
It's just there and you'll forget about it after reading it. So I, I would suggest if you've read everything else in the expanded universe, right? You have nothing else now, but you want to be a completionist, read this book. You are missing nothing by not reading it. It doesn't enhance the universe at all. It doesn't add to the universe. It doesn't even add to the video game. You could play the video game without reading this book and you'd be completely fine. In fact, I do would recommend playing the game if you're going to do anything. Don't read this book. But chronologically, it took place next, so I made sure to read it. But that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to get in slight spoilers for this book to just mention a few things here and there. And if you don't want that, now is the time to go. But if you don't care about spoilers, you don't care about this book, or you've already read it, then come join me. I don't have too much to talk about. Um, um, I don't even know how to sp spell this girl's name or how to how to pronounce right, how to pronounce it. D douche, do do. I don't want to say like douche, but that's kind of what it sounds. I don't want to say her name, but she's she. It was interesting. It was an interesting part because she's talking about how she does like all this scientific stuff for the empire. And she knows that some of the stuff that she's given to the Empire for research is probably being used for bad things, but she just kind of ignores it. She's happy studying the stuff that she studies and moving on. Um, one of the things that did generally get me and you know, made me feel slightly something was the Athorian companion that was in the short story and in the first couple pages of this book gets killed off. Which surprised me, because basically this dude, um, I mean, he's a pretty decent dude, he, he was an okay character, I liked him enough, and then they just killed him off, which I thought was pretty crazy, so I, I'll i give props to him for that. Nim being in here was really cool, I already mentioned Nim, but Nim, I, I really liked Nim in, in, the, in those comics that we had in the prequels, and I enjoyed him in the video games, so it was in, the, in Starfighter, and uh, Jedi Starfighter. It was really cool to see him here. Um, there is a nice small moment with Han. Because he basically is talking to Nim. And he's like saying like. You know you keep saying you don't want to be like in it. You just want to kind of be neutral. But the Emperor, Empire has a way of like. Ruining your life even if you don't. Interfere. So you might as well join up. Um, and I don't know. I just thought it was it kind of showed his development so far. And I like that about it um and then the big twist of the book the big twist are you ready were you not expecting it from the moment he showed up finn the rebel who's falling that's another thing um finn is falling in love with with the main girl and she's falling in love with him do you care no but here's the thing <gasps> he's a traitor oh my goodness oh no he's a traitor Oh, my heart. I, do, I don't care. He's a traitor. He lied about the Athorian. The Athorian um, was looking like he was giving information to the Bothan rebel sect. He wasn't. He, uh, Finn lied about that and then killed him off and got the, the girl's trust, went with her to do stuff. And he's like, oh, I'm loyal to the Empire. I feel the Empire. But I also feel my feelings for you. Please join me. And then he stabs her because she won't. She makes it out because, you know, Luke and Leia save her in time. But, you know, he goes back. Vader's like, I have plans for you. Even though we'll probably never see Finn again. So whatever with that. Um, and yeah, it was a super not surprising twist at all. And it the romance was stupid. That was stupid. I just, I just don't care about this book that much. There's not much to it. You don't need it in your life. But... Th those are some things I just wanted to mention in spoilers. Um, there's some nice things in there, but it's mostly an eh and forgettable book, so I, I don't recommend. But hey, everybody needs to form their own opinion. I, so read the book, find out for yourself. I'm just saying that I, I, I've heard virtually no argument or debate on this book. Like I've, I've never heard anybody be like, I actually, I thought this book was the greatest thing since sliced bread, and why don't you love it? I've never, I've never seen someone really defend this book so far. But, you know, if you're one of them, if you enjoy it, please let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, until next time, guys, may the force be with you.